Let's talk about something as controversial as politics, and that's frame rates. People choose their frame rates like they choose their political parties, and they get very offended if you don't like the same frame rate as them. Politics aside, let's look at some frame rates. Here's 2398, which just consider me talking about 24 and 25 for the rest of this video when I mention that. Here's 2997. And here is the same shot in 59.94. Last year, I made a video about frame rates, but I was specifically talking about slow motion and it actually became the most popular YouTube video I've ever made. But a lot of people got pretty upset with it because I wasn't saying 120 frames was the best frame rate ever. But I was talking about slow motion. This is where you take 120 frames and play it back at 2398. So it's about five times slower super slow motion. And this is not always the right choice when you're creating films. And let me say this, there is no perfect frame rate. I would say there are better applications for each frame rate. So first off, what is a base frame rate? To simplify it, it's the frame rate you intend for your film to be viewed at. It's how many frame rates per second that you're capturing your footage and intending to play it back at. So let's talk about each frame rate and when you wanna use them. And so the first frame rate I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna glump this all together, is 23, 9, 8, 24, and 25. They're essentially interchangeable. 25 is PAL, that's in Europe and other countries. This is the classic cinema experience. This is a filmic look, and it would be used for most scripted and dramatic type of films, kind of anything that's going to theaters most often. And I would say, actually, it's a great application for most documentaries, unless it's perhaps maybe a nature film. Here I am in 2997. This would be the most common video format that you would see on TV. This is what you film home videos in. This is what anything that is 59.94 interlaced is actually displayed at because when it's interlaced, it plays back in 2997 progressively. Well, sort of. You kind of need to understand what an interlaced field is versus progressive. Progressive is your whole screen where interlaced is each line of resolution one at a time. And some TVs will first display the odd fields, then the even fields, creating one cohesive image. And here I am in 59.94 for the very first time on this channel. So smooth, isn't it? Now, some of you might be looking at this saying, finally, he's come to his senses. And I'm gonna say this, there is no perfect frame rate. And I'm gonna tell you why this is not the right frame rate all the time. This is what's often used for news and sports because it is so smooth. So then why then if it's used for news, did I shoot 23.98 for my film that was on CNN, a news network? But why is there not one frame rate to rule them all? Well, it comes down to this one simple thing and that's cinematic visual language. So let's talk about that. Hi there. What's this? Well, you're probably thinking it's today's sponsor. It's not. It's a box with 80 terabytes of hard drives. And why do I have 80 terabytes of hard drives? Well, I'm shooting a lot of documentaries right now. And that's actually who's sponsoring today's video. It's the art of documentary. And if you're not familiar with it, it's our documentary course. It's the complete guide to telling compelling films. We launched this course about a year ago. We've had almost a thousand students come through and they are now creating the most amazing films. It's been so exciting watching people take all of the teaching that we have and apply it to their careers, to the corporate videos, and most importantly, to their passion projects, to the documentaries that they want to be creating. And what's really exciting too is we've created module two, which is our advanced version of the course. There's now over 55 new videos in module two, and we do a deep dive into directing. We do all the behind the scenes work. We take you on set and into the edit suite showing exactly how we edit and cut our films. There is so much content in this. We've been working on it for over a year. I couldn't be more excited for this, but you wanna get on the early bird list. We, we open up for just about a week or so on September 7th. We only open it up about twice a year, only for a couple weeks. There's special early bird pricing if you can get in right away. So get on that wait list on theartofdocumentary.com. Again, we don't keep this course open all year, so you don't wanna miss this exciting opportunity to be a part of the Art of Documentary. It's lifetime access. We don't do a monthly plan. You get it for life. So go check out the Art of Documentary and set September 7th in your calendar when we reopen the course. But let's get back to frame rates. 
I want to talk quickly about my favorite frame rate, and that's 24 or 2398 rather. And now I know all the people who love video games are going to be very upset that I say it like that because there's more motion blur and it looks worse and it's not as smooth. And yeah, those are all true. But why I enjoy that is something I call cinematic visual language. You see, since we were kids, most of us, we've been watching films at 2398. This is the inherent visual language that we've come to accept what cinematic films feel like. Departing from that feels like a new language. It feels awkward. It doesn't feel right. And here's a few reasons why I believe that. You see, cinema is about withholding information. It's why we crop in on our images. It's why we shoot shallow depth of field. It's why we light things with high contrast. This is what cinema is. You're not seeing the entire world. If you go watch a virtual reality film, it's not necessarily as cinematic as seeing your favorite latest action film or documentary. That's why I think we watch films. We want to see the world differently. We want to see it through the eyes of the storyteller. And 2398 does this, it adds a bit of motion blur. And you know what, in real life we do see motion blur. Taking away any motion blur just doesn't feel real. It feels hyper realistic in a way. It is kind of jarring. I, to me, I don't feel more immersed. I always feel like I'm looking at a video game. To be honest, movies like The Hobbit and Gemini Man, I just didn't enjoy that. It just felt different. Again, it felt like I was watching a video game and it didn't help me suspend my disbelief. This is a really important part of 2398 and 24. As I would say, it's easier to accept the world on camera and you're more willing to participate in the story. When it feels hyper-realistic, again, you start to feel like you're watching sports or news and it takes you out of that storytelling universe. I'm purely talking about a philosophical approach here, not technical. I fully accept that there's less motion blur in 60 frames and 120 frames, but that doesn't necessarily make it better. That's like saying something that is brighter is better or something that is louder is better. Just because you have more fidelity, more power, more technology available doesn't mean it's the right choice. Essentially, how much motion blur we see, they believe is closest to 60 hertz. There's some give or take there because every human is different. But this is why I want to watch sports at 60. When I turn on the basketball game, I want it to feel like real life. I want to think that I'm actually at that game. And when it comes to 120 frames, I think it'll always have its place in video games, but I think we're very far off from it being universally adopted. For one, it's five times the amount of data, and also Blu-ray caps out at 60 frames. Because 120 frames is so clear and there's so little motion blur, you can start seeing blemishes in the film, like the fact that half these shots here are a stunt actor and it's not actually Will Smith. The irony is too, YouTube can't even display 120 frames, so you're actually just watching 60 frame playback. This is why I don't think 120 frames is gonna be a default format. There's just not the avenues to show it right now. I still think for a very long time, we'll see 2398 as the universal cinematic language, unless there's a generation that grows up entirely on 120 frames. So let's compare these frame rates against each other. With 24, you're going to be getting more motion blur. There's just less frames per second. This is like shooting with a slower shutter. You'll get more motion blur. So with Landon doing his jumping jacks here, if I pause it, you can see his hands have a significant amount of blur. But in comparison to 2997 and we pause it, there's a little less motion blur. And then at 5997, this is progressive, so again, it's almost 60 frames per second, you're getting even less motion blur. And this type of motion blur would be more similar to what we see with our own eyes. Also, side note, motion blur has a lot to do with your shutter angle, and I have a whole separate video explaining all of that. Just like Marshall McClung said, the medium is the message. And the medium of 2398 is the cinematic message. And when we want to depart from that, we just have to accept that we're sending a new message to our audience. I shoot all my documentaries in 2398. And if you're interested in how I shoot my documentaries and how we go about creating our films, I do have a film course all about this and it's opening up September 7th. So you can go check that link down below. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Please, for all the video game players out there, come and hate on this video. I welcome to have conversations about this, but let's not take it personal. It's just frame rates. It's not friendships. All right, I'll see you on the next one.